everybody. Thanks for watching Optometry TV. I'm Kara Moore, joined now by Dr. Elizabeth Steele. Thanks Good for morning. being here. Thank you. So we're here to talk about disc drusen, and let's start off with some new technologies. Right, so disc drusen is sort of an age-old problem. We've known about disc drusen for decades, but um, probably the most um, common reason we discuss it, or the thing that keeps us um, our, our, our awareness heightened about drusen is that it can often mimic uh, disc edema. And so, um, you know, diagnostically, anything we can do to have a more accurate uh, picture of what's really going on can actually, pre it, it can prevent stressful conversations with the patient, it can prevent invasive tests, you know, brain imaging, lumbar puncture, things like that. So what's unique is that when we really look uh, carefully at the recent literature, we can, we can be more confident using our OCT, our spectral domain OCT, the technology specifically, either a swept source type OCT where we, we're using longer wavelengths to get deeper penetration mm -hmm. past the inner layers of the retina down into the, uh, the sclera. Um, but more commonly, what, what optometrists have access to is called enhanced depth imaging OCT. So what we're doing is we are, we are sending the signal, we're focusing the signal deeper into the retina. We're able to get a really good resolution of the sclera of the globe in its shape. We can look at, uh, we can, you know, if we've got a, a situation where there may be very subtle disc edema or disc elevation and we're not really sure clinically if it's drusen or if it's a crowded optic nerve or if it's actually just subtle disc edema, we can use this enhanced depth imaging to get a very high resolution look at the shape of the globe. We can look for what's called scleral flattening. Um, in the case of uh, elevated intracranial pressure, like we see with papal edema, which is what we hope it's not ultimately when we're sitting there talking to a patient or a parent of a young patient, um, in, in the case of an intracranial pressure that's elevated, what we're gonna see on this OCT scan with enhanced depth imaging is a push forward, an anterior push of the, of the sclera, and it's gonna look flat, just like it would if we were to order an MRI. So it's unique because we have it at our fingertips. It's non-invasive, it's not expensive, and it can prevent unnecessary testing and stressful conversations. So that's really what, uh, what I would focus on the most in terms of technology. Uh, what about some of the newly suggested associations for disc drusen? So one of the things that um, uh, is really uh, published in 2016, so not entirely new, but something that we should kind of heighten our awareness mm -hmm. to is disc edema itself. So it's kind of funny because um, we think of them as a, in, we, we kind of clump them together clinically because they can appear as one another. Disc drusen can look like disc edema. Disc edema can, can actually be drusen. And so we're always trying to differentiate the two. But um, in 2016, a um, group of folks published a really nice uh, study of 300 patients. They followed these patients over 25 years. And that group of patients all had resolved papal edema. So they all had resolved uh, you know, disc edema in both eyes from intracranial pressure. And um, in that group, what they found over that 25 year period is that about 19% of them actually had drusen. And that's about 10 times the normal population. Mm -hmm. So um, ruling out coincidences, which they did, what that tells us is that there's a relationship between these things. And it really kind of goes back to the mechanism of drusen. There's a problem with axonal metabolism and transport. The, the nerve fibers are just really struggling to do what they're supposed to do. And so you get these deposits of, of calcium and things. And so it's not clear if the association is you get drusen, so you're predisposed to uh, you know, fluid in the retina mm -hmm. uh, or in the nerve, or if it's the other way around. Uh, but it's just one of those things that we want to continue to look for in, in addition to the vascular associations we've uh, seen. What do you say to clinicians who may be watching saying, oh, what do we do? You know, because we know Yeah, and that really is the question. So um, the tough thing with drusen is that, you know, we think of it as a benign condition because it wasn't papal edema. You know, we've ruled that out with our, with our testing, with our high definition um, OCT. Um, but once we get the diagnosis of drusen, it's really important to realize that that is its own condition that, that needs to be followed. And it's not relatively benign. It's, uh, it's relatively benign compared to a brain tumor or intracranial pressure that's increased. But it's not benign in that it causes cell death of the axons of the optic nerve. And that means we're gonna get visual field defects. And so 
all we know to do, and there's really not good evidence, and for decades we've known that maybe we can reduce the, the intraocular pressure, maybe we can um, you know, put them on a drop or something that's anecdotally neuroprotective, and there's really not good, uh, good data there, but um, there is some substantial, uh, you know, relatively anecdotal but clinically relevant data that we should, we should just reduce the IOP. So that's what clinicians will typically do is put the patient on a, uh, an IOP lowering drop. Even if the patient's pressure is normal, we can do that. Just like if, if it were normal tension glaucoma, we would do the same. Um, so again, there's not a whole lot of data that we should be doing it, but the data that's there says, hey, this might help. Mm -hmm. And it probably won't hurt as long as we're not, you know, um, picking a drop that would otherwise cause an adverse event. All right. Well, a lot of good information there. We appreciate thanks. you being here, Dr. Steele. Thanks You're so much. You're very welcome. And thanks for watching Optometry TV.